I love to, I love to throw ideas at the director, and I'm happy if he takes one out of ten. That's great. If it makes it on the screen, that's great. The ideas you should have, and I like when I have a crew. I love when I have really engaged people. My dolly grip, my focus puller, my gaffer, my key grip. If they pay attention, if they know the script, if they understand the story, if they understand the screen, the scene. If they understand the scene, oftentimes they will come to me and say, "Hey, I was thinking, what if that?" And it's like, that's a good idea. Let me, let me run that up to the the big guys and see if they like that idea. So it's great. I, there's a good flow of ideas that way. That really helps. It makes a better movie all the time. Well, I think a lot of it was real. All those lost. A lot of the, I mean, the particular thing that looks real is the exteriors, the boat at sea. That was real. We went out. We filmed the movie with Robert Redford for about 30 days at the Fox Titanic movie stages in, in Rosarito, Mexico, which was a great place. But then, at, and that was all on, on these um, tanks, these water tanks, interior tanks and exterior tanks. And um, we, J.C., the director, and I, J.C. Chandra, the, the director, and myself, we both, from day one, thought we have got to get Bob in a boat in the ocean sailing. We have to get the real thing, not just a synthetic, you know, movie tank. And uh, the insurance and the, the, um, the bond people, the people that somehow secure the money, they're like, no, we, you know, we can't, if we lose Bob, uh, we don't have a movie. So JC and I sort of put that in our pockets at fine. But when the, the last week of filming, we said, well, we finish on Friday. If we can convince Bob to stay an extra day, we'll take the, we had three boats, three sailboats, one of which was fully functional, even though it had a hole in the side, we patched the hole, we repaired the hole. Uh, it was very saleable. So we convinced Bob, he was glad that he was ready to sail on day one. We convinced Bob to say yes, and he did. And then we told the insurance people, look, the movie is finished. If Bob falls off the boat and we can't save him, it's okay, we still have a movie. Uh, joking. But uh, so they said, yeah, fine, we have the movie now. You guys can go sailing. In the boat, in the cabin, in the interior of the boat, it's, even though it's a 40-foot boat, it's small, and so there, there's Redford walking around, and there's me with a camera, and we have to pass each other sometimes. He has to go by, and I have to pan with him, so it's very tight quarters. Uh, but I can get skinny, I can get very skinny, and, and uh, Bob knows how to move himself. He's very artful in his movements. He knows how to move around a camera. So we, we, we danced. We had a, 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 a very easy relationship. We had a good physical relationship uh, inside. And then uh, outside on the boat, I did very little. I spent, if he was sitting and not moving much or sailing and guiding the boat, I'd be there handheld with him. But if he was moving around the exterior of the boat, I, would, I used a, a techno crane with the camera on it, and I could be there right with him, but not on the boat. I'd be on a remote controlled camera head, but I could move with him as he moved around the boat. And it was very, and I would add a little imperfection. So I had a pan and a tilt, then I had a third guy, my uh, technocrane guy, he would add a little this, so we worked together. I'd be panning and tilting with him, and the third guy would give it a little water on this high seas effect. That worked very well, we could always stay close. JC, the director, he wanted the camera to always be close to Bob. We had six weeks of hard preparation. I, I was aware of the film early on, so I'd already been doing some preparations. Also, JC had told me in 2010 that he had a movie that might involve some sailboats. So I learned a lot about sailing in my own personal time. And then uh, we looked at, JC already had um, a very coarse storyboards that he had made. He worked with an artist and very simple storyboards of the whole movie before we even arrived in Mexico. And then he, he charged me, it was my job, 
in the early prep was to find movie references, still photograph references, anything with a man on a sailboat in stormy weather, in good weather, whatever. So we looked at, I found a lot of movies. Also on YouTube, there's a lot of GoPro, the little waterproof cameras. There's a lot of people who go sailing and they bring the little GoPros and then they're in races and they get in trouble and the boat falls over, gets hit by wind. So there was a lot of really good uh, reference material on YouTube. So I used my computer and the internet and, and spent a lot of time researching and finding uh, movie footage. But uh, those two movies, Knife in Water and Dead Calm, we looked at a lot. Dead Calm, we looked at it because it had, it's a thriller, it's, it has tension, it has expectation, it has dread, it's, it's, it almost has horror. And we, so we really looked at that because our movie, All Is Lost, had a lot of those emotional uh, moments as well, those emotional uh, feeling. Uh, and then Polanski's Knife in Water, because, and that is amazing because Polanski was just out of film school, I think. It's his first movie. He has a, 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 a plywood floating camera platform and a cameraman on a tripod, and yet he took brilliant, he did brilliant work there, really captured this very confrontational, emotional story too, between the three characters. It's really good, it was really well done. And they have a storm, it has a lot of interesting um, things, there's leaking water, and just interesting physical elements. They have to eat and cook in this tiny, and how did they get the camera in this tiny boat? It was really, re a little Ari 2C. It was really fascinating to watch that, we watched that a lot.